welcome everybody to Clearwater Jazz Holiday Foundation's Young Lions Jazz Master Virtual Sessions. Today's educator and guest musician is Mark Feynman. And Mark's topic today is exploring triplets, comping, soloing, and coordination. Everybody is muted for the courtesy of others during the session. We are recording these sessions for the purposes of Clearwater Jazz Education and Outreach. But if you have questions, please use the chat feature, the raise your hand feature, and we'll get those questions to Mark. If you have feedback on these or other sessions, or if you would like us to cover a specific topic, please email info, I-N-F-O, at clearwaterjazz.com. Mark Feynman is a wonderful friend of Clearwater Jazz Holiday Extended Family of Musicians. He is a participant in the locally Tampa Bay based trio La Lucha. Their music ventures into a wide variety of musical styles and offers a fun mix of genres under the jazz umbrella. They have received countless accolades and have extensive national and international performance experience, including several plays at the Clearwater Jazz Holiday Music Festival. If you'd like to learn more about La Lucha, you can visit laluchamusic.com and you can check out their music, get in touch with the band that way. Mark is a drummer, composer, and educator who is inspired by individual human experiences and a diverse range of musical influences. He has extensive performance experience playing with many wonderful musicians. Mark was awarded an Emerging Artist Grant from Creative Pinellas, the Think Small to Think Big Grant, a Jazz on Edge 13 in 30, 13 in 13 commission, and a Project Gen Yes residency to present a multimedia project raising awareness for Alzheimer's disease at Studio 620. He is also a drum set instructor at St. Petersburg College, and he is a good friend of ours. Mark, welcome back for your second of th a three-part series <clears throat> focused on drums. Uh, the stage is all yours, my friend. Take it away. Thank you so much, Steve, and thank you again to the Foundation for putting on these fantastic classes. I've been enjoying uh, participating as well in other classes, and I look forward to the ones in the future. Um, so hi to some, some good friends and people that we see, some people I, I'm not sure that I know, but I look forward to getting to know you. Uh, today we are going to talk about triplets. Is everybody hearing me okay? Just a thumbs up. You're getting to hear me all right? Okay, there's an issue, uh, Steve, or anybody can jump in and let me know. So uh, this, is, this, is, this is a fun class for me because triplets are, you know, very closely related. I would say it is the rhythm that defines jazz. Now, how could a rhythm define what jazz is? Well, when we say jazz, a lot of words come up and things come to our mind, and one of them is swing right? Well, what do you do when you play jazz? You swing. Well, where does that swing come from? What is swing? Well, it comes, it's based off of the triplet feeling and the idea of performing and playing a triplet in, the, in different variations. So um, let, me, let me first play a, a simple quarter note on the ride cymbal with hi-hat on two and four. This is a very common uh, kind of uh, beat in music. So it goes like this, in jazz specifically. And I would imagine that the bass player is walking a bass line along with my ride cymbal. And that's just like very, well, I would say it's simplistic, but it's actually the hardest thing that you could ever do on the drum set playing jazz. Um, the very late and incredibly amazing phenomenal drummer, Jimmy Cobb was known for this pulse of just quarter notes on the ride cymbal and hi-hat on two and four. Everything else that's happening under that and between that and around that, that's the triplet. So even when I'm playing this, I'm feeling the triplet. So what is the triplet? Well, first let me ask a question. Is it triplet or is it triplet? What's, this, what's the syllabic here? If anybody knows, uh, please let me know. You can look it up in the uh, dictionary and let me know. But what I will say is 
I toggle between the two. And that's important to note because when I'm practicing or performing, I am counting and feeling the actual word triplet. So sometimes it can be one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. I like that. I prefer that because it allows me to actually count the number on the beat. The other version, which is the three syllabic, it doesn't give you the numbers. It's just triplet, 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 triplet. And it almost kind of forces me on that kind of puss sound in the middle to put an accent there. And we don't really want to have that accent. So the triplet is a three note rhythm. If you want to see how it's written, I wrote it nice and big here. So it looks like three eighth notes and there's a big three on top of it. So what it is is three notes that fit within one pulse of the beat, which is usually the quarter note. So in each one of these, it would be one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, So you can hear it has this kind of very moving pulse and it's still on the beat, but there's this underlying undulating feeling. And this is very, very closely, I mean, it's a direct relationship to African music. So the drum in general, this cylindrical instrument, it comes from Africa. These instruments were carried here to uh, when you know we created the drum set, when we had marching instruments, and these rhythms came with African slaves, unfortunately, um, which became jazz, and that's a much bigger history class, which is a topic we should know about and we should could, should talk about at some point in the future. Um, and these rhythms come from that twelve eight African feeling, which sometimes could be you know. So this kind of underlining feeling. So triplets are kind of throughout this whole thing and usually it would be on a bunch of congas or different types of drums. Um, and so they ended up on the drum set and that underlining feeling is there. So how do we play a triplet? You play three notes inside of a pulse. So uh, one way that I like to practice that is just by alternating my hands on my laps, on my lap, like this. And I'm thinking one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet. No accent here. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet. My dog loves triplets, by the way. So, um, and she'll, she'll let us know when she really likes what she hears and what she doesn't. So triplets on my lap. So how can we play these triplets? Well, there's three of these notes. I'm playing them in, in succession, one triplet. That's just one, three parts of a triplet. So similar to the last class, which was the quarter note system, we looked at every possibility that a quarter note could go in a measure. Now let's take a look at every possibility of a triplet. Okay, so let's break this down. I'll move quickly, I'll move fast, I'll talk fast, and we can loop back around if there's any questions. Okay, what's the first possible place that you could put an accent in a triplet? Anybody? Yes, beat one. Okay, so that would sound like this. I'll put the accent on here. One triplet. Just one of those, it sounds like this one triplet, okay? So I'm gonna put an accent 
on, I'm going to play four triplets in a row, and the accent is going to go on the first triplet. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. And I'm not doing anything fancy with stickings for anybody that's not a drummer. A sticking is how, which stick you play with. I'm just going back and forth, alternating right, left, right, left. Um, if you're not a drummer or don't have drumsticks, do these on your lap. So it would sound like this. One, two, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Okay, that is the simplest version of where you can put an accent on the triplet. What is the next possibility where you could put an accent on that triplet? The second partial of the triplet. There's three partials. We put one on beat one, and I'm going to put what we call an accent there on beat one. And then for the second one, I'm going to move down to what I wrote number two, and I just have a little accent under the second triplet. So, and I'm still playing all, I'm just tapping all of the triplets right now. All I'm doing is putting an accent on my hand where that partial is. So here we go, second partial. This one is a lot more challenging, I will say, for me. One, two, ready, rock. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, slower. Two, three, four. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. That one is just stuck right in the middle of the other two triplets. It's a hard one. It's a hard one to, to feel and to think about. And we're gonna go, we're gonna loop back to that one. That is the the problem child of the triplet. Okay, now let's go to the third partial of the triplet. We had beat one, we had the second partial, and now we have the third part, okay? It would be the let of the syllable. So you can see that it's just creating this pattern. One, two, three. Okay, let's, let's tap that out on our lap quickly. One, two, ready, go. One triplet, two triplet. Let three triplet one triplet one triplet two triplet three four one triplet two triplet three triplet four triplet one triplet two triplet three triplet four triplet and it's important to count aloud the counting tells me that I'm breathing and it allows me to not rush and it allows me to play in time and Putting the accent in my voice allows me to vocalize what I'm going to play on the instrument as well. If you can sing it, then you can play it. And if you can play it, then you can dream it. And if you can dream it, then you get ice cream. Okay, let me play that one on the snare drum briefly. And I'm doing it with the snares off. One trip. Already, it's starting to sound pretty advanced, pretty, you know, a lot like jazz. And that one is very angular. That one is when you're playing jazz and you have what's called an anticipation to the next beat. Um, that is what that rhythm is. It's the third partial of the triplet. Okay, let's get into the weeds a bit. I pulled weeds this morning in my front yard. So let's use them here. We did the first, the second, and the third partial of the triplet. Now let's move to the first and the second. This sounds like this. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Now this is difficult as well because you have to make sure that they're spaced out. You don't want them to sound like eighth notes and you don't want them to be too fast so they sound like 16th notes, okay? So uh, if I was actually going from quarter, eighth, uh, let's say go from quarter note to the first two partials of the triplet to 16th notes, here's what it would sound like if I clapped it. One, two, three, four, one triplet, 
two trip, three trip, four trip. One E, two E, three E, four E. One trip, two trip, three trip, four trip. One, two, three, four. Okay, so you can hear how it sounds like it's getting faster. The, the, the rhythmic pulse is just moving quicker between the notes. It's important to practice between rhythms. If I practice triplets all day and all night, and then I go to the gig and I'm rushing and I'm slowing down, and I'm thinking, but I practice triplets all day long, but why? Well, you only practice triplets. Music has a lot of different uh, movements. I'm not just moving in triplets. I'm moving between triplets and quarter notes and eighth notes and 16th notes. It's important to practice the variations between those rhythmic uh, durations. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the next one. So we did one and two. Now let's do the first and the third partial. This is going to give us what's really similar sounding to the jazz ride pattern. So it goes like this. Let me play that on the ride pattern so you can, the ride symbol so you can actually hear. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. So here we actually have our shuffle pattern. If we take out that middle triplet, we have the shuffle pattern. Okay. So we did one and two, one and three. Now we need to move to two and three. Now, if you're looking at it on my page, and I can throw this up as a PDF for you, uh, if you're not writing it down, it, it looks all over the place. And I'm just adding the accents underneath the larger one you can actually write out each one. If you wanted to write out all, all the triplets and read them, that's fine. I'm doing it in the simplest form, and then I'm using my creativity to, to base it off of this. Okay, so this is the second and third partial. It goes like this. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, slower. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Okay. So that is, that's a very cool one. Uh, and we're going to come back to that one. I'm going to show you how that one works really well uh, while comping. So I'm going to dive into a little bit about comping on the instrument, talking a little bit about soloing, how that works, and coordination as well. So the last one is we did one, two, three, one and two, one and three, two and three. So we're at the end of two and three. So we go back to one and we fill in two and three. Okay, one, two and three. So that's all, that's accenting all the triplets. And you could do this where you're playing all the triplets and accenting, or you could only clap just like I was just doing one triplet, two triplet. So Bob's gonna clap all of the accents so they would sound Just sound like a nice round of applause for myself. And I'll take a sip of tea for that. Okay, so now how do we use this? Uh, how can we practice triplets and use this in a musical sense? So what I said in my last video where I talked about creativity is Anything that I practice, it's never going to be used for one thing. It's not going to be, oh, it's so I'm better with rhythms. Oh, it's so I can play fast. Oh, it's so I can play slow. It's only so I can practice. No, it's going to hit all of these things. So this is exactly what we want to use because it's similar to the quarter note system, which is it's going to help us playing time. It's going to help us with our coordination, our creativity. It's going to help us with our coordination and our technique. Um, it's going to help us with all of the things that you need musically. And when you need to pull them out, you can. So if I'm going to practice triplets, I'm going to put the accent on the first triplet, but I'm going to play all the triplets. Can you hear the padding on my lap okay? 
that, is that coming through? Okay. I'm going to pick the easiest song that I know that I could sing. So when I'm practicing this, I want to make sure that my triplet coordination and rhythm and my triplet rhythm is very strong. I mean, I can talk over it while playing it. So that's, it's already telling me that I'm doing okay. But when you're practicing a tune, you want to put the tune to this. And here's the reason why, because all music, especially jazz, it's going to line up with the triplet. There's no um, secret rhythm. There's no, oh my God, this rhythm doesn't fit inside of this thing. It's all going to fit within triplets, 16th notes, or eighth notes. If it's funk music, it's probably going to be 16th notes. If it's pop music, it's probably going to fit within eighth notes. And if it's jazz, the melody is going to fall right in line with triplets. Now, it doesn't, I'm not saying that a singer or an instrumentalist has interesting phrasing, so it might lay back a little bit, and that's okay. That's just, that's just an emotion within how the melody is being played. But I'm going to sing a song, and I'm going to line up all of the melody with this. So I'm going to pick a simple song so I don't have to think too much. And, I, and this is great rhythmic practice. I do this all the time. Here's a song I just sang 10 minutes before I got onto the Zoom call because my one-year-old daughter is asleep. So she loves this song. She requests this. This is called Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. <clears throat> this is also the beginning and the end of my singing career. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Okay. So one thing I did is I, I put the accent on the first trip partial of every triplet, okay? So I, that was the one that I wanted to showcase was the, the accent there. And the reason why that was important was because that was the melody. I sang it as the simplest version that I could, which is uh, I didn't have to think about the words. I didn't have to think about the melody, which I kind of was singing, but I had to make sure that the rhythm lined up with this, okay? So... Now that I know I have an easy tune, let me go through all the triple, triplet partials while singing this song. We know the melody is on the first, the downbeat. It's on the quarter notes, on the first triplet partial. But I'm going to play all of the other rhythmic stuff underneath it. Because musically, especially in jazz, we have to be able to hear and play the melody or listen to a soloist and react to it. Okay? So I'm going to put the triplet partial on the second, the second partial, so the second one. So one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Okay, so um, there's one more A section to that. So there's another thing that we can think about is form and music, and this is just a simple form. Uh, so that one's a little more challenging because we have an accent here that we're not singing here. Okay, and you can go through, uh, we're not going to go through all of them, but you can go through and feel how each of these triplet partials feel with singing the melody. Um, and some of them are odd, some of them are obscure. You can go through every four bars and change it, every two bars, every bar, just keep singing through it. I do that where I'm just doing that. Or you can clap, twinkle, twinkle little star. So that one's more challenging because you don't have the other triplets that you're feeling. You have to be able to feel it here, but play it here. Okay. So 
that is one way where I take a melody. And then uh, here's the next thing that I would do. If you're, if you're an instrumentalist and you're practicing a tune and you want to be able to solo while feeling these triplets, even if you're a, a, a drummer as well, um, but I'm, I'm speaking more melodically, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start changing the rhythm a little bit. So I'm going to do this, the first partial, and I'm going to start changing the rhythm of the song a little bit. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle. A little star, how I wonder what you are. Okay, two things. I, I did a few things that were a little obscure where I went into the middle partial of the triplet, which makes everybody feel uncomfortable, unless it's something you've practiced over and over again, but it's good to feel uncomfortable, okay? Number two, I changed the rhythm. It was still noticeable. It had a more of a jazz swing feel to it. That's that shoulder jazz swing feel to it, okay? Uh, and the third thing is I changed the melody slightly, but it was still noticeable, right? We still noticed it was Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, hopefully, but I gave it, I just moved the melody just a little bit. So that's simple improvisation, right? And I'm just going with what my ear is hearing. Um, there's no wrong and there's no right. It just is, and you have to accept that, okay? And that goes for playing on the bandstand and off the bandstand. Uh, okay, let's move on to, let's move quickly, because I know we're, we, we don't have a lot of time, um, but let's go to comping, okay? Similar to the quarter note system, we played on the quarter note and then we played the rests. So if you can go back and check out that video, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to put my bass drum every time I have an accent. Where I don't have an accent, I'm gonna fill in the rest of the triplets on my snare drum. So let me just play the bass drum where the accent is. And I'm gonna play the most stereotypical jazz ride pattern, which is the quarter notes on one and three, and I'm playing that shuffle swing pattern on two and four. It's not the is all end all jazz ride pattern, it's just an option for playing a ride pattern. All right, the accent is on one, two, three, and four. Okay, it's four on the floor you'd be feathering the bass drum. And I'm gonna fill in all of the triplets, the rest of them, in my snare drum. Okay, this is a classic jazz comping pattern, okay? I could take out the bass drum and here's what it would sound like. Okay, and it still sounds pretty good. I'm naturally putting an accent on my snare drum on this on the, the, the second one. This is a classic Philly Joe Jones type of feeling. He used to do this all the time. If I didn't put the accent, it would sound like this. It's a, it's a little more flat. So I'm gonna give it some life. All right, good, moving on to the next one. The bass drum is gonna be in the second partial of the triplet. I'm gonna fill in everything with my snare drum. If I take out the bass drum, it sounds like this. It's the shuffle, it's the shuffle pattern. But don't play that here. Only play the ride pattern that you choose. If it's quarter notes, fantastic. If it's you're playing the stereotypical jazz ride pattern, that's great. 
make sure everything lines up. It's important that you're practicing your coordination and technique doing this. Okay, third partial in the bass drum. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet. This is a classic Tony Williams kind of thing. He used to do this all the time. It's a three note pattern and he used to use it. And he would actually go between those eighth notes, triplets and 16th notes doing this um, that we kind of talked about before going between those. I'm not gonna demonstrate that because Tony does that. I don't do that very well, maybe one day. Okay, I'll move quickly through this. So the first two partials, so, and the third one, okay, so the two accents are here, the third one is here. One and three. Here's two and three. And then the heavy metal, all three. Okay, then what you can do is you can go back and switch it, all the accents in your snare drum and all the fill-ins in your bass drum. You don't have to do that because they're actually already there. Like number one with the accent on the first one is actually the number six, the opposite way. Okay. So, and I know you don't have the PDF in front of you. I'm referencing something here that you don't have. I'm understanding of that. Okay, that's comping. Now, when I get onto the bandstand, I'm not going to be playing, you know. If I did that over and over again, Dwayne would, might turn around and say, hey man, uh, <laughs> that's a lot. No, no, Dwayne's, Dwayne is here and he's, he's too kind. He wouldn't say anything, but, uh, We've had this conversation before, like how much, what is too much comping? What's too loud? What's too much? That's too much. It has to be sparse. It has to fit within the melody. You have to do it between the melody. You have to do in reaction to the melody that is being the melody that's played in the head and the person that's soloing. So, twinkle, twinkle, little star. So I'm using variations of all of these seven. Sometimes it was too much. Sometimes it was, it was just in between the melody. Sometimes it was with the melody. Great. Let's quickly move to soloing, okay? How can I use this while soloing? Well, the same thing that we're doing. I'm just orchestrating the accents this time onto different parts of the drum. For now, I'm only gonna alternate my sticks back and forth, right, left, right, left. And every time I have an accent, I'm going to put it on a tom, wherever my hand lies. So it's gonna go back and forth, right, left, right, left, for one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. So if you did it on your hands, on your lap, one, two, three, four. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet triplet, four triplet, okay? So I have a consistent triplets. Wherever those accents land, I'm gonna go to the closest tom to me, okay? Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet.
I'm not crossing over anywhere. I'm just naturally, my hands are moving to the toms that are just right in front of me. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so let me move on to the second partial. It's gonna actually start with a left hand. One, two, The third partial. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Okay, one triplet, two triplet. So it's the third partial is going to be on the melody here. The first two, one and two. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. This is a classic Max Roach sound. If you've heard the famous Cherokee drum solo, he does this on. It's very cool. It's kind of mind boggling with how the melody turns on here. But I'm not doing anything except moving my hands back and forth and going to the nearest drum according to which triplet I'm playing. Okay, so let me play through some of these just so you can hear what it sounds like. And again, if I'm playing a solo or any drummer's playing a drum solo, I'm not going to play a stream of triplets. It's going to be having phrasing and breaths and rests in it. But for now, I'm going to practice a flow of triplets using this using this triplet system here So thank you, thank you, Greg. <laughs> thank you, Lee. <laughs> um, alrighty, so uh, that's just a simplistic version of how to approach soloing on here. I'm not gonna play a stream of triplets. It's just a great way to find new sounds and explore and to find your creativity. Now, the last thing I had on here was, was coordination. All of this is coordination. If uh, you have to be able to coordinate your limbs to make sure it works, how can you get the you know, the hi-hat involved. It doesn't need to be always bass drum and snare drum. It could be. So there's something called the flow system where essentially I play any note anywhere, anytime, and then I create little, you know, uh, a little, little assignments and, and walls around me. And one of them can be triplets and it can be this thing right here that we're doing. And I'm just creating a flow of anywhere, anyhow, triplets. I could do these using different stickings, right? Now I'm only using right, left, right, left. It could be right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. That creates a whole new challenge and also new sound. Um, it could be starting with your left hand. If you are a right-handed drummer, um, do everything with your left hand. Do like every, every, everything with your left hand. Uh, if you're a uh, right hand dominant, uh, you need to get comfortable using that left hand as a lead. Um, eat your meals with your left hand, open your doors with your left hand. Seriously, do, be, you need to learn to be left handed also. Um, and you don't have to, it's just my suggestion. These are things that have worked for me. Um, are there any questions? I'm happy to answer questions related to uh, triplets. Mark, I have a question. So, so you were just talking about these flow sequences that you you can do to practice and be creative. Are there any are there any resources that outline some practice methods on that that you know of, or other resources that you could point to, or other ideas you you have about yeah. how you can go about? becoming better at that. Yeah, so in general, when you are playing, a, when you're speaking a language, we're um, speaking what is considered English right now, I want to make sure that my ideas flow out as uh, clear as possible. Um, and so 
I want to make sure that I can do that on my instrument. My ideas are flowing out. It, it's, it's not about that the person can, may understand you or they know you're playing triplets, but they, they get the idea and that, that feeling, right? Um, it's not about them knowing the, the cool notes you're playing, but rather that they, they can feel that and they can hear that coming from you and that you're expressing yourself. There are no books that specifically talk about the flow system that, I, that I'm using, which is flowing ideas. But every book has an idea where you're supposed to play something um, over and over again, uh, which I, I uh, closely related to the definition of insanity is uh, doing something over and over again with, with, with was it without result <laughs> or something like that and failing constantly. Um, but you, you are not, you're slowly chipping at something. Let, let me say that there are two books that I really do love. They don't really touch on being in the flow, but they, they do, they can get you there. One of them is Syncopation by Ted Reed. It's a fantastic rhythmic book. It's not just for drummers, it's for all musicians. And if you are wanting to play jazz or you do play jazz, this is a great book because it helps with reading. It helps looking at really interesting rhythms and it works for all styles. Just the first measure in that book hits on like at least seven or eight different types of cultures that play these rhythms. Um, so Syncopation by Ted Reed and the other one is Stick Control by George Stone. And this is an extremely boring book. Um, uh, the cover looks boring. The color of the book is the boring gray, but the information is fantastic. Uh, and the information, like the first three pages of both of these books have like text, text, lots of text. If you're going to write a, a book for any musician, especially drummers, don't write a whole bunch of text in the beginning. They're not going to read it. Um, I didn't read it until college. And when I did read it, it didn't tell me the information I needed. But I was very lucky to have mentors and teachers of all instruments to help me out and to say, hey, maybe let's approach it like this. So the George Stone book, the first like six pages are literally just eighth notes like this. And underneath it, we have what's our stickings, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, which is our hands, right, right, left, left, right. Okay, so how do you play this? Only on a snare drum, only on a tom, only on a four tom, no. You play it everywhere and anywhere. Your R could be your foot, your L could be your bass drum. So this book is actually a vehicle for creativity. It doesn't say that in there. It was never edited to do that. But I had a really wonderful teacher named Steve Davis. And he said, hey, why don't we take this book and do something called flowing? Take the ideas and flow with it. So we took, you know. That's one way to play it. The other way is to play it loud and soft and slow and then fast and then with accents, without accents. I do this first day with all of my students. Doesn't matter their age, their advanced. I just want them to get comfortable playing a sound. Um, anywhere, there's no wrong notes, okay? You can do this on your instrument, uh, any instrument, just play notes. Just play, right? And just getting finding something. Now from there, we're creating those walls of the flow system. So let's say it's all, I'm gonna start doing right, right, left, left. It sounds obscure. It sounds like I'm really just hitting things, uh, but I'm practicing my coordination. I'm practicing my technique. I am was practicing dynamics. I didn't really speed up or slow down. You can do that. You can put on a metronome. Um, you could then move through doing that with triplets. So that's, that's the simplistic version of the flow system. The next version is to add in the quarter note system that I was talking about last week to add in this triplet little system that I'm talking about. So there, it's all involved. These are really the only three things that I need to work on that give me a world of information, which is triplets, working within quarter notes, um, 
and practicing the flow between different rhythms, quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets, and 16th notes, uh, because you want to be able to go between those three musical uh, durations, those four musical durations rather. And within those, we want to make sure we're taking the time to rest and breathe and to have space for phrasing. And more than anything, we want to make sure that we're leaving space to listen. And we're listening to ourselves, we're listening musically to the other people around us. And even when we're not on our instrument, we should be stopping and listening. Okay. So that's my uh, that's my idea of flow and how to approach it. And then a little philosophical ending there for you as well. What a great session today, Mark. Fantastic. We, uh, we're looking forward to having you back with us on Monday. So don't go too far. Um, your topic on Monday is playing better with brushes. How, when, why, and where. So we are, we are excited to have you with us. And uh, there's no doubt that we'll think of some other fun sessions to uh, do together. Next week is a really fun week for us. Very packed with some wonderful educators and musicians. Um, we, of course, have Mark again on Monday. Brandon Robertson is going to be with us on Tuesday, and he's going to be doing a great session on where do I begin as a professional. Um, and we have John O'Leary back with us on Tuesday as well with a piano session, piano technique and jazz. On Wednesday, we have uh, James Suggs and Dwayne White together, which is awesome. And they're going to be doing uh, why listening to music is important. And we have J.J. Padishaw on guitar on uh, Wednesday as well, navigating the neck and diatonic chord scales. And there's just so much. So clearwaterjazz.com slash education. You can see all the upcoming sessions, how to join. And you can go see all the other programs that the Clearwater Jazz Holiday Foundation uh, produces during the year in addition to the big music festival and support it if you can because it helps us do more of these great things and um, we just look forward to you continuing to participate with us mark it's been a great uh, you did a great job today and we can't wait to have you again with us um, any final thoughts before we sign off uh, i just want to say uh, can if you are here today let three people know that these are happening and in addition also give them three recordings that they can check out five people uh and five recordings that they can check out that you really enjoy and have them give you five recordings and share that love share that joy open your mind to things that you don't know about and when you think that you are uncreative you need to stop and just listen around you. Great words, Mark. We'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.